So welcome everybody to the latest uh, Joe Dell webinar. Today it's my absolute pleasure to be collaborating with UTalk and we're going to be hearing from Dick Housen, uh, the CEO of UTalk, um, and talking all about how uh, the UTalk um, app can be used for promoting uh, languages and as you can see from the title, getting kids fired up about languages, which is what this is all about. It's fantastic. So today is the 11th of October 2021. And I would uh, love to hand over to, to Dick right now, uh, allow him a little bit of time to introduce himself. And I know he's got a, a fantastic video he's going to show to us all around uh, what you talk is all about. But thank you so much, everybody, for coming along this evening. We are recording the session, so you'll be able to watch it back on my YouTube channel, which is available at Joe Dale 100. And uh, feel free to write any questions that you may have in the chat. Uh, we'll be monitoring the chat throughout the session. Uh, it's, it's helpful for us if you put a queue in front of your question to make it very clear it's a question. And uh, when there's a natural pause, if there are any questions, I'll then put those to, uh, to Dick, as well as asking my own questions. So feel free to write any comments in the chat, as well as questions as well. And we're going to go through all the, uh, all the, the aspects around you talk and the exciting competition, which has uh, started already, which you're going to be able to take part in. Uh, and if you would like to use the code, which Dick is going to show us in a moment, um, you can get 10% off the uh, for the competition as well, well using a particular code. So well, over to you, Dick, if that's OK, and you yeah. can take it from there. Thanks so much for agreeing to do this. Yeah, uh, Joe, thank you very, very much indeed. And, and good evening, everybody. And the code, which I point out again. Oh, I don't know how this screen works. Well, what we'll do is once you stop there. sharing the screen... Yeah. Well, do, do you want us to shop, stop sharing your screen now, and then we can see the code? If that's okay. So yep. if you just okay. stop sharing for a moment. Oh, I stop sharing. Yep. Got it. Just, Sorry. Yeah. And then we'll be able to see your your screen. Um. Stop. Yep. There Perfect. Right. So as you can now see, that works um, up there. Yeah. So for those people <laughs> who can't see that as well, it says join the fun at utalklanguages languagegames dot com. Use code fired up f i r e d u p for ten percent off. Uh, for entering the competition that's perfect lovely yep. we'll mention that at the end as well <laughs> lovely so do you want to yeah, share your screen again there. and then we can yep. uh, do a little presentation and then i'd like to say that um the rest of the session will be a live demonstration of the utalk app so uh it'll be great okay over to you dick okay thank you and um what i'll do quickly we're going to whack in there and i hope that's all working all right yeah and 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 then i'm going to play a quick video which um, if I just say the language games comes from something called the Junior, uh, uh, Junior Language Challenge, which uh, the company was called Eurotalk at that stage, started in 2004. And so we've done a lot of them. And the objective, even at the beginning, always is to get, in fact, since the company started, is to get people excited about language learning. And, and the competition um, actually started believe it or not, with, with trying to help a, a language college in Cornwall uh, who uh, wanted to be able to teach Cornish in Cornwall. And we made the app and they said, could we do some special sort of demonstration to the mayor of, of Truro and all sorts of other things? So we set up this competition, which went really, really well. Um, and I, just for teachers, I'll put in one other thing. I think it's accepted that normally in languages, girls outdo boys, sort of 80-20. And when we do this competition, uh, we turned it the other way around and the boys outdid the girls 80-20. And um, I probably ought to mention that there was a prize for the winner of a custom surfboard, which went down very well in Cornwall. Um, but the idea was to get the kids excited about language learning. So we invented this competition, which is around the app itself. Um, now, this video is some feedback from a competition from about two years ago, where it was a live competition just before COVID. Um, and so I'm going to play that for just a moment. Annyeong. Bonjour. Dzień dobry. Salut. Habari. Learning languages literally helps us understand each other better. If we can communicate with each other, we are more likely to be able to solve problems together to make the world a better place in big and small ways. This is what I hope for all of us. And with the help of apps like the one that Utalk has created, we can have fun at the same time. When you learn a language, it isn't just 
enhance your linguistic skills. It, like, in every way, academically, it helps you because, um, like, the awareness of who's around you and how to, what to use in this situation, and the way the, way the games were laid out was um, very helpful. And in Chinese, and in Chinese, my name is Sai Chuli, Yu Yong, and Chen Ma. Yeah, it is really fun. Um, we, I enjoy the games, and it's a nice opportunity to learn a new language. I, I didn't think I was going to win, but I wanted to just do my best so that I could, I just wanted to make my parents proud of me. I'm pleased to come third, but next year I'll be back. <laughs> it's so fantastic to see the enthusiasm they have for it in and outside of the classroom, talking about their scores, talking about how well they've learned their different topics. And even if they don't go as far as the finals or the semi-finals, they've at least learned one extra language on top of the ones they learn at school. I felt absolutely ecstatic. Everyone's smiling around me and I felt really, really good then. Children really enjoy it. It's, it is a challenge. They, they have to take that challenge on, but it's a very, very enjoyable, worthwhile challenge. It's what we hope we give people is the ability to make friends all over the world. Even knowing a few words can make a huge difference. It's the difference between being not to be able to say anything at all or being able to make someone smile. I've now lost everything on my screen, but it comes back again. So that was that one. Um, That's lovely, Dick. So if you want yep. to share your screen again and click on desktop one, and then you can then show us the fantastic app. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, right. We're, we're winning. And there's the app, which is now going to materialize. All lovely. In front yep. of us. There we go. Um, and and um, yeah, that was that was just to show that the, the, the kids really enjoy it. It's changed a bit with COVID. Um, one of the nice things is the children, actually all the children take part or can do in, in all three rounds. Um, and, and one of the things that I would say, first of all, is what we're trying to give the children is a, what I describe as an awareness of languages and, and basically to come out of it knowing not that they've learned a single language, but that they can in the future learn any language they put their mind to. So that's that's the goal. Um, and I probably... Uh, Dick, sorry, can yeah. I just ask you to go full screen? Is that okay? If you click on the green icon top left of yeah. your app and then you... Yeah, perfect. That's, that's it. There we are. Perfect. Good. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> so it looks different from this end. Uh, I hope I'm going to make it work okay, but that's good. That works okay. So so one, one thing I, I would just probably say is I, I'm a little bit I, I put this bit at the beginning this is this is the negative side of of language teaching if you like or certainly in the past is that um you go to school and you do the three hours and you do learn some history and geography and when you come out of school and you do languages obviously and when you come out of school uh you can normally read you can do you can write you can definitely go shopping and a lot more with your maths know how fast the car's going things like that um, and you probably understand when it's going to rain or not and why, and you probably remember who William the Conqueror was. But if you're then, or most kids, then grown-ups, they're dumped in the middle of France and they're in their car and they want to fill it up with petrol and they're asking how to do it, 99% can't do it. Uh, they can't say it, they can't speak it, and um, that's probably what me most people want. The other, the other big challenge is, is that a lot of schools at secondary level are finding it difficult to get kids to take up languages. And, and I think, uh, I'd, I'd like to think that maybe there's an answer to all of that. Um, and one of the things I would say is that any language learning app or whatever you want to call it, nothing on its own like that will ever make anybody fluent. It's, it's, it's basically you want to give the kids all the tools they can get hold of and use whatever they enjoy and find works best because however good the tool is, if they don't like using it, it's not going to be, it's not going to work. So our, our, our aim is, is to get people doing it. Um, and uh, from that point of view, 
there's a number of factors which is that they have to be able to measure their progress um, and, and, and feel that they're doing something. And sorry, one other thing I need to put in about what, where we see the gap in you talk is in hearing, understanding and speaking. So that's, that's really the first thing anybody needs to acquire in, in a language is, is, first of all, to, to be able to understand what someone says to them. And, and after that, to be able to start saying, rather as a child learns their first language, uh, they're learning to understand actually in the womb. So we're, we're under, we, we believe now they can understand quite a lot, but it's only after a year they start talking and then um, reading, writing and, and grammar, if you're desperate for it, comes a lot, lot later. Um, so we, we're after that bit, hearing, understanding, speaking. Now, in terms of demonstrating tonight, what I thought I would do, um, originally I'm, um, I was going to be really mean and dive into a language that absolutely no one here knows um, and um, show you what it's really like. But what I would say to any teacher, and we can give you, if, if you're a teacher, if you're watching this, come to us and say, look, I'd like to have a go at it. We will give you free access to any language providing you're a teacher and you don't know that language. So if you're a French teacher, we will not give you French. If you're a Spanish teacher, we will not give you Spanish on that free basis. You can please come and kind of buy it off us. But what we want you to do is to experience what it's like for the pupils learning something from scratch, because if you can see what it's like for them, then I think you'll enjoy the whole thing much more. So at the top of the screen, we've got French and what happened this afternoon is I got enrolled into the uh, language games by someone into a, a, a Utalk company uh, class. And I found I had naught points and I was a little bit um, despondent about that. So I had a little go this afternoon and I'm going to click. Oh, hang on. I might just go back. Uh, so I'm going to say one. No, I, no, 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 get it forwards again. So I'm going to go into French. I'll talk to you about other languages in a minute. Um, so. Here we are in, uh, with me enrolled as a student. And what we tend to do, although there's lots and lots of topics down there, uh, you as the teacher decide the topics you'd like to choose for your kids at any one time. And at any one time, they can be learning up to 15 topics. Um, in total, they can get onto 30 topics. So you can switch them around, which I'll show you. And what I thought I'd do is to go into school um, and so I'm going to click on school here. I'm going to take you through basically how you do it, how, what you learn. The other thing I would say is that when learning a language, uh, the key thing really is it ha that, that the goal is for it to tip off your tongue like it's your own language, like it's your first language. So that's where we want to get to. It's, it's, it's not much use having a vague idea of two and a half thousand words, but never being able to recall it instantly. What's much more use is to get maybe a, a smaller vocabulary, but it's there. It's like the French say, uh, le weekend. Um, it, it, it just is natural. So uh, the other way around, that's what you want. Now, we're going into the school section. I'll go into phrase practice. Le cahier. And um, it may, if you're a French French teacher here, then this will all be natural. If you're uh, English and, and not necessarily from France, some of the words in here, you might actually be quite surprised at. Um, this, the, the list for school I actually got from France where my children were enrolled into a French school for a term. All three of them, they were aged, uh, um, uh, trying to remember, 10, 10, 8 and 5. And I mean, it was quite an interesting experience because they didn't speak a word of English. But at the beginning of term, we were given a list of all the things you need to bring to school. And we added a few other things to it. And this is it for school. Um, and obviously, it cuts across all schools one way or another. So Le rapporteur. Uh, you can see Le the various tableau. words. And now I've got to just move something off the bottom of my screen, which you can't see. So I can go and click on the right place. So, ooh, and I've just put chat up, which I didn't mean to do, but that will go again. Go chat. There we go. Uh, so you can le tableau blanc. You can hear it slowly. You can record it yourself. Uh, le tableau, uh, le tableau blanc. Record it yourself. Uh, le tableau, uh, le tableau blanc. 
Le tableau blanc. Um, you can sort of tick yourself if you've got it right. Now, this is, this is the practice section. The one thing I'd say for all the kids using it, they won't spend very long in here, I'm afraid. Um, they want to get straight into the games. That's what we've learned. But if they're not sure what the picture is, this is the place to go to. This is where to tell them to go to. If we go from there... Le tableau blanc. Oh, I'm, I'm, Le tableau sorry, blanc. The other thing they can do is play all the sounds right through. Le... Um, what I'm going to do next is to click back to here. So the very first game is an easy game. And the idea of this is for the kids to do this. Uh, it gives them a huge amount of confidence because when they're playing it, um, they can get full marks really easily. Le tablier, la trousse, le directeur, l'élève. Le tablier. Now, they've just heard what le tablier is. If they were just listening there, they'd know it's that le one. Le tablier. Oui. L'heure du déjeuner. L'emploi du temps. Le scotch. La brosse à tableau. La brosse à tableau. Yeah, and, and I, I like, by the way, le scotch in, in, in French. It, we call it sellotape. It all depends where it comes from, but they call it scotch because that's where it's made. It's uh, things like that are quite fun between languages as well. But um, we do the tableau. La brosse blanc. à tableau. Oui. Sorry, not the tableau blanc, the brosse à tableau. L'inscription. And so on. Le classeur à anneau. Le directeur. L'air de jeu. And so you can see, le you carry on playing this game, you can, you can get full marks by just concentrating. Although, you know, I've tried it in lots of other languages. I can tell you in Chinese, it's quite a lot more difficult. It does take two or three goes to get full marks. But all the time, you know, if you play the game as 10 rounds like this, that's 40 pictures or getting on for that that you might have seen. Uh, you start to remember them much faster than you'd imagine. Uh, now, the next challenge... Uh, for kids is to get them talking in another language. Um, it, it is it certainly was for me a really alien and embarrassing thing, um, but they tend to be much happier rather than trying to say something in class, uh, talking to a machine. So um, in the speaking game, this particular one, the goal is to get them talking. Uh, that's all. And obviously they want to score points. To score points, all they have to do is talk, which you'll see, and not much more. Um, so uh, we've got le casse-croûte for the snack in the middle of the day. So le casse-croûte. So le casse-croûte. La maîtresse. La maîtresse. La maîtresse. Le tipex. Le tipex. Le tipex. Les feutres. Les feutres. Les feutres. La salle de classe. And, and one of the other things I'd add is the kids start using the app. Their French accent comes very, very quickly. They kind of like mimicking uh, the actors. And obviously, on all our languages, we use very native actors. Um, uh, you know, and we pick them with, with good, good voices. So we'll do... Uh, here we go. La salle de classe. La salle de classe. And what's quite fun with this game is now having got this far, le tipex. Now we're playing the game with the pupil's voice, um, i.e. me. So, and because you've recorded it yourself and things like that, you kind of remember le it tipex. quite oui. well. La salle de classe. La salle de classe. Oui. La maîtresse. And, and this, is, this is a short game, so I'm, I'm going to... I think that's La maîtresse. Oui. I'm going to go to the end, just because then that's quite nice. You can see what happens when you get four marks. Les feutres. Les feutres. Les feutres. Oui. So, le casse-croûte. And then we'll have a quick snack. Le casse-croûte. Oui. <laughs> Bravo. And I've got full marks in that, which I'm really pleased about because I didn't earlier. I got one wrong. Um, and so now you can see a little white band has gone all the way around that one. Hard game I had to go at. We're going to go into that very briefly, but we're not going to go through the whole thing. This just takes it up a level. 
This time, you've just got to remember to get it right. La récréation. So, and, and if, I, if I get it wrong and put the pencil Le sharpener crayon. instead... Non. La récréation. La récréation. Oui. Les feutres. Les feutres. Oui. Le stylo bleu. Le stylo bleu. Oui. L'emploi du temps. L'emploi du temps. Oui. La directrice. And now as you can see, it's gone up to six cards. It's another round with seven, another with eight, another with nine. What happens is they'll be doing quite well and then they get one wrong. And normally what we see with the kids is when they get one wrong, they, they may go to the end the first time, but after that, they know they can get full marks. So what they tend to do when they get one wrong, they quit and start again and have another go at it. And of course, that's brilliant because they're getting the, the with the pictures and the sound, they're getting dual coding, which helps it get into their mind. And they're remembering things much faster than they would, you know, than they would have expected or anybody else for that matter. Um, I'm now going to jump into the game that everybody loves or hates. Um, and then this one really um, picks out, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, you have to get it right. And what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to get a bit of help from the chat here. Now, uh, this game, everybody, well, not everybody, a lot of people say this is impossible. You can't get full marks. Um, when we first invented the game, uh, we, were, we designed the app using Russian, which we really didn't know at all. And um, we were about to scrap this game because we said it's too difficult. And then we thought we'd just see what it was like if it was in English. And so we recorded the same game again in English and went and played it. And we found it was dead easy. And we realized that this is, this is the goal that we're looking for, to be able to, to remember the vocabulary and speak the words, or not speak the words, but actually well, even to speak the words in the language like it's your own language, just to get really good at it. So this game is tough. To get full marks in this game will take you, uh, I would say, probably three or four goes. Um, even, even some of you possibly, no, I don't know, some of you brilliant French teachers. Yeah, you can tell me and we'll see how we get on. And you'll see what happens here. So I'm going to do round one because that's easy. So we've got the pupil, élève, uh, l'élève, and le cahier for to the oui. exercise book. But now we've got three things there, and we've got to remember where they all le are. Le surligneur. So I'm going to do the first one. Oui. In fact, I'm going to do this round. La trousse. La trousse, I think, was over there. Oui. And remember, we don't want to make, make a mistake. So can you remember where everything is there? La brosse à tableau. Uh, anybody tell me where la brosse à tableau is? Chat. Someone's come up. Um, can so Vix, can you... Oh, no, I probably... Can I see it? Hang on. Let me go and get that on my screen at the right place. Oh, I can see it. It's Joe's asked if anyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, listen, we weren't possibly up to the mark and I'm not sure I can remember. L'élève. Non. That was the pupil. La brosse à tableau. Le scotch. Non. La brosse à tableau. Now, each time we're doing this, we're actually losing so, so a point. We, we have the, director. the one at the bottom left side. Yeah. Oh, and, and Rihanna... Uh, Rianne, you weren't far off. Okay, now we, this is the next one. So let's go. The directeur. Where was the directeur? And you can see what the challenge is. I think that might be the bottom left. Oui. So well Le done. scotch. Where is the scotch, scotch, anybody? Anybody, any guesses? Top I right, I think. Top think right. Top right. Oui. Yep. Yay. Now concentrate this time, everybody. Le tablier. Any guesses? Oui. Brilliant. Bottom Le casse-croûte. Yeah. Okay, next one. I think I'm going to... Yeah. The one in the middle from oui. Reham? Yeah. Hey. Brilliant. La salle de classe. Salle de classe. 
Right. First one, the first oui. one. Brilliant. Le tableau. Tableau. I'm going to top top right, did someone say? Oui. Okay, we're going to go for the sixth. We get six. You'll be glad it doesn't go beyond six. <laughs> um, so we've got le stylo bleu, le directeur, le uh, déjeuner, le compas. Le compas. Oh. Oui. Le professeur. I think that wasn't the... I think the professeur might have been up there. Oui. Le stylo bleu. Anybody on the stylo bleu? I think it... You think top right? Top one on the right side. Oui. Brilliant, thank you. I was about to La go trousse. wrong there. Le trousse, anybody? It's a word I'd never heard. I certainly never learned that at the school. Brilliant, thank oui. you. Oui. L'heure du déjeuner. Bottom middle, I think. Ah, I think you're right, oui. Joe. Brilliant. Okay, <laughs> now we're against the clock. So I'm going to show you that I'm going to get stuck. Le tableau blanc. Le tableau blanc. Oui. Le scotch. Oui. Le surligneur. Le surligneur. Oui. La brosse à tableau. Oui. Le maître. Oui. Le rapporteur. Oui. Le directeur. Le maître. Non. Oh le directeur. I think he was the director. Oui. That's annoying. Les I have to go play again. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get this. So look, we'll oui. stop there. You'll get some idea le what it's rapporteur. like. Against the clock, if you're not quick enough, which you'll see in a second. Oui. You can see the bar at the bottom. You've got the rubber. Oui. Le maître. Oui. Can we get there in time? La salle de classe. Can we get there? No. Right. So that's the challenge. La um, salle de classe. I said you'll get the kids getting quite cross with it sometimes, but I promise you, uh, once you know those words, you're away. And if you're not, and I'm going to quit out of that quickly before I lose any more points. Um, then the final thing is, so, so when you're learning a language, you need to be able to hear it and know exactly what it is instantly. But the other thing you want to do is to have it instantly on the tip of your tongue. And uh, again, I'm going to get some audience participation here, if that's all right. And I do accept that some of the words, uh, there, there's more than one answer. So one of the things I will say to you is that um, we, we've tried doing voice recognition for, you know, telling people where they've said it right. We've done all these things with, with, with waveforms and things like that. And we found that by far, by far the best thing, we've had some really top mathematicians on the voice recognition, that by far the best thing is for, for saying whether you've got it right or wrong is your own ear. And, and it's really good at doing it. So here we've got... Uh, Le leçon, I think. Um, I'm going to have a go at this. Le leçon. Le leçon. La leçon. And as uh, any expert French teacher out there can see, I got it wrong because it was la leçon. Um, now, it's up to me to decide. Well, I just really mean to remember it was leçon. So am I going to give myself a mark or not? Um, and it's up to you slightly guiding your pupils as to how much you, whether you want them to remember the gender or not, or whether you're really happy that they can just remember it's lesson. So I'm going to give myself a tick and you'll see there's a little number down at the bottom, which is there's 32 uh, items in this topic. I'm going to click right there. And it now goes down to 31. Um, so anybody here want to volunteer what I should say? For the mistress. And otherwise, I'm going to have a quick guess. Would it be la maîtresse, maybe? La maîtresse? See if that worked. La maîtresse. Oh, I couldn't hear you, but yes, it was la maîtresse. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking oh. it might pick up your voice, Joe, but I've got headphones on, so it didn't quite do it. But absolutely spot on. So we've got that one. Um, lunchtime. Anybody want to go for lunchtime? So obviously and, we, we, I've disabled the microphone. If people want to write in the chat what they think yeah. the answer is. 
Anybody guess? I'm going to have a little stab at it because I think I picked it up earlier. I think it's uh, Le de Dejeuner. Le de Dejeuner. Le de Dejeuner. Le de Dejeuner. Yeah. Anybody think, do you think I should give myself a tick or a cross? Anybody want to tell me? A, a tick for a sympathetic listener. Tick. There we are. <laughs> Ulf, Ulf just said tick and Vicky <laughs> said tick as well. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So you can see how it's going, and that number's going down. Now, if I put a cross by it, um, because I can't remember what it is, and um, this word is on the tip of my tongue, and it's gone at the moment. But if I get it wrong, or I just can't remember what it is, then I can say, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. La trousse. And then I hear that it's a truce. I'm going to remember that later. Now, I put a cross there. The number doesn't go down. And as I carry on through the game, then... It'll come up again and I'll have a second go at it. So with this game, you play it right to the end. You do get full marks, um, but with lots and lots of goes. And the encouragement from a teacher would be to say, play the game lots and lots of times until you can get it you know, right first time. And the other thing I would say is if you play this game so that you can get them all right first time, when you go back to what I call the hard memory game, then you will, you will get full marks very, very quickly. And then there you are with 31 words of vocabulary and a nice score to go with it. So that's, that's uh, a, a quick resume of that part of the app. There's one other thing I will show, two other little features I will show you. Uh, we'll come out of there and end up in the right place. And am I right in saying, Dick, that when the, the students are doing these activities, that all the information, all the analytics, et cetera, will be then sent to the, the teacher's dashboard so they can see how the students are going, are getting on and maybe the gaps in their knowledge or the things that they need, they need more practice with. Is that right? Yeah, exactly that. The teachers gets a, teacher gets a dashboard that shows how much they've learned. The dashboard, by the way, we're developing all the time. So if teachers come back to us and say, could you do this or can you do that? The answer is probably yes, because all the data of what they've learned is in there. Um, the children's names and things are all de-anonymized, so they, it, it doesn't use, for primary, we don't use their email address. They're giving them a login and a password. But the background data is all there for you to look at and see how long the kids have spent on it and, and uh, how many points they've scored. And we'll, we'll go to the teacher's dashboard in a second and we'll see... We'll see exactly how I'm doing since I started off with naught points this morning. And the dashboard itself updates about every hour. It's not instant um, for various technical reasons. There's, uh, using the app around the world, there's over half a million people now. So um, the way the dashboards update, we just have to be slightly sensible with, with the data. Um, there is also, wherever it's gone, and I can't see it at the moment, um, I've lost my... Ah... It's because I've done it. Um, I've just wrote, there is a phrase book feature, but it doesn't come up with the kids because they don't get all the topics. So forget the phrase book feature, but it's quite fun. Um, if, you, if, you're do, if you're a secondary school teacher, then you can get all the topics, but we slightly ration the topics for the primary kids. because if you give them too much, they think they're never going to do it. So you want to give them a certain number they can do, but it's up to you as a teacher to add more topics on later so that, by the end of each round, I think they get up to about 30 topics. Uh, one other feature that's quite useful, and I'm going to get to in a minute, is if I go, I've just got to move things around on my screen, is um, at the moment, well, all, all the time, in fact, it's, it's another thing I would say, um, a lot of teachers, or uh, probably not teachers actually, but a lot of people say, we've got a terrible problem in this country. We've got loads and loads of kids whose first language isn't English. And my, my response to that is that, that is we should treat it as the most fabulous resource, because if you're trying to get kids learning languages, what better thing for them to do is to learn the language of their friends in school who already speak another language. So um, at the moment, we've got obviously a lot of people coming from Afghanistan. Um, and you can either see this as a challenge or an advantage. But number one, if you've got kids in the class whose first language is not English and they want to use the app to learn from their own language, and if all goes well here, I could go and type in here, um, I could go and type in P-A-S-H and get Pashto. 
and then come out. And if all goes according to plan, I've got to move the chat over there again. I did something wrong. Did something slightly wrong. I'm going to come back out again. All right. Now I'm going to go forwards again. Wait a moment. Uh, I think Pashto is one of the ones where we haven't actually done all of the translations, but I want to give you one where we've done all of it. That's interesting because it's mostly there, I think, but not all. So we're going to do diary, which I definitely looked at today. And that was there. So now, if, if they speak Dari, I think if I've got it right here, I might not have done, um, then here I am with every, all the topics there in, in my own language. Or, sorry, that's all the languages in my own language. And then here, when I'm going into the app, there, it, everything in the topic we've just been doing is telling me what it is, how it works. It's in my language because that's my first language. So... The, the app has over 100, there are on it actually 146 languages you can learn and about 140 languages you can learn from. The learn from languages are included for everybody. All you have to do is to select them. Uh, so I'm going to go quick zap over there and go back in a minute, just as I don't forget and find the telephone box. And there we are. But so, so, and, and when, if we, they're in the practice section, they'd see all the words in French, but they'd see also written underneath them in the practice section what it is in their own language. So there'd be no mistaking it. Now, what we're going to do next, if everything goes according to plan, is I'm going to zip over to another section and I'm going to go to history and I'm going to go to language games. And I hope, is everybody, you can see the screen all right here? Yeah, yeah we can see it absolutely fine. We're seeing the You Talk Language Games site in Safari, right. so it's perfect. So I'm going to, I'm going to go and log in. If I've got this right, this is me, and this is my personal dashboard. Board, so the kids have their own dashboard. And um, if I've got this right, and unfortunately someone put me in twice, by the way, which is really annoying. And I think what I've just scored, the points I've scored, and oh, no, maybe not. No. Well, anyway, it looks like I've got 530 points, um, which I could be quite pleased of. And then if I look here, I see, oh, look, and I have got this award called Teacher's Pet. Uh, so and that's a silver award because I've got more than 210 points in, in the school topic. So the kids can go and actually fill out this whole thing. As they do all the topics, uh, they'll be able to get all those awards filled in. So at the moment, it's got silver in it. If they can go back in and get full marks in the hard memory game, full marks in the recall game, they'll get above 315. I think it's 330 for full marks, but if they get above 315, then where it's teacher's pet at the moment, it's in silver, it'll turn to gold. Um, and similarly, what they can do... Oops, hang on. Why did I log out of that? Let's go in there again. I went back too far. Uh, and the other thing I can do... Beside that, I think, well, the teacher can do now. The teacher, which we'll go into in a second, can actually print out that as a certificate for me as well. So that's where I am. I've obviously got a few points to catch up with Henry at the top um, and, and all the others. So I've got a little bit of hard work to do there. But we've had, I've had parents ring up at the weekend saying their child is, is desperate to get to the top of the leaderboard and they were worried when it didn't update fast enough for them. But it, it, I was glad to say it does now. So can um, I just check? Can I just check, Dick, with the people's names who are there? Are they all part of the same group, or are they yeah. all? Uh, so this would be part of your or? school. This is part of your school. So who have you log on in the school? And in in terms of age group, um, I would just say we've had. Um, you know, what, one of the fun things about learning a language is it it sort of it's got not that much to do with age. In fact, the younger kids, you know, I've 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 um, been with kids, obviously 
in the past, it, I, I was taught by a four-year-old once what things were on the menu in a restaurant because he could understand it and I couldn't. And, and he was doing a running translation between me and a French waiter in Geneva. And, and that's one of the things that taught me that that was the French I really wanted when I was at school. Um, and, and there was this little kid who was helping me and he, he couldn't read, couldn't write and, and hadn't had a grammar lesson, but he had what I really desperately wanted. And it made me much more excited about learning language because I thought if he can do it, I can jolly well do it. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop out of that. So all uh, the names of the people there, Dick, they're all people who work for you talk. They're all right? people in they're all people in you talk. They've all yeah. been having a go at it. Yeah, we I I, I offer bribes for the to staff. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. So uh, cool. yeah, it's it's our way of testing it because that's a, the real sort of way of testing things and making sure what's going on. And somewhere if I go back here, I think I get at home. I'm gonna go to register because that the quickest way I saw and now I'm going to be a teacher go in there and log in and now I'm a, I'm, I'm a teacher so I get the same dashboard I can go in and view the achievements so I can see what I've done I can download the certificate you can change passwords if they forget their password you can go and reset it we found that sometimes kids forget their password or it's given to a friend and they're worried about it and and so that's something the teacher can sort out and I'll show you a few other things that the teacher can do as well. But one of the things there, you can download a certificate and email it or print it out for a child there. And I don't know if I can do this now. Um, and there we go. Is that Does that come up on the screen all right? Yeah, absolutely yep. fine. We can see good. the certificate. So uh, I've done. Yep, no problem at all. So uh, good. Thanks for that. And I'll put that away again quickly. And then we'll go... Uh, there's this screen. I'm going to pop onto that quickly. Those are all the topics. As a teacher, you can go and change the topics your kids are learning and then tell them to learn out and go on to the other one. So you're given 15 at a time, but you can decide which the 15 are. Um, so, and again, this is just by popular request from teachers. Some like, like different topics. Um, the uh, Here is the important other bit, is registering entrance. Um, to, to register them, in fact, I'm going to go probably back to, well, no, I'll show you this bit, and then I'll go back to see how you get to here. So here, you can either type the names in and the last name, and, and it'll give you all the login details when you're finished, or you can download a CSV template with all the kids, or upload, I should say, um, and, and then uh, that's it, done. And then you'll, you'll get a, a, an email with all the kids who you've entered and their uh, username and their password, which you can then hand out to them. So it does it uh, is it, it is pretty easy to do. Um, and if I go back to the home screen where it says register, if you're a you you can register or kids can register as individuals, and then they have to put in a credit card or the parent does, and they can be set up to go in the competition or you can register a group. And I'll give you a quick run through on registering a group. So um, you can decide which languages you want at any stage. So you choose your first language, your second language for the school. So you, you tend to do it for the school. So you get them all learning the same language, but we can do it. So you learn different languages. I think I'm not going to be shot when I talk back to the office for that, but I'm pretty sure we can do that. And then, typical um, contact details because what happens is you decide how many kids you want to enter and everything else we invoice you a month later so we even give you time to change those details and things like that and then even after that if you if you find some kids desperate to join and everything else you can add them on later we can amend the invoice you know anything you like but the details we ask there are what we need in order basically to to, to send you a bill how much does it cost that's probably a, a a useful question to ask. Um, if you haven't, if you're not using the special discount, which is ten percent discount, it's five. Obviously, you're going to be, so it's a bit less. Uh, five pounds per child, and that gives you access to the app for the whole year and three languages. So, we generally encourage um, schools to choose one language for the um, autumn term, one for the spring term. So you can't get the second language till the spring term. 
And then there's a third language and we tell you what it is. And that's the competition one at the end. So by the time you get to that language, the kids have got good at learning languages. That's, that's what we want to get them to that stage. And we invite the kids who've got most points in the other first two languages. And, and we've got a way of going through and working it out. And we invite the top ones there to go into regional and then a national competition to see who is the top person. I said, those, those competitions uh, at that level used to be live. We might get back to live again, but we're playing it quite carefully with COVID because obviously uh, it's not that easy uh, at the moment, certainly with, and certainly with schools at the moment. So um, we can't pretend that we've got any degree of certainty that might work. Live competitions, as you saw from the video, were great fun. But, um, and there are prizes. We, we do, uh, we, we have prizes for the kids at the end and, and certificates for them all at the end that they all get sent as well. Um, as I said, the goal is, is that they've got good at learning languages. So the third language could be something that doesn't have a Roman script. It might be something like Russian, or it might be um, some, you know, um, I'm trying to think, an African language. It might be Zulu or Chichewa or who knows. Um, and, and we work that out at the end, slightly checking that none of the people who've got that far in the final actually speak that language already because that would be a bit of a shame. That wouldn't work quite so well. So we, we choose one that way. Um, and Vicky's just asked in the, in the chat whether you offer Manx as a, as a language from the uh, Isle of Man. Not the Isle of Wight, which is where I'm from, but the Isle of Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. We even do Manx. Manx, we do. <laughs> um, I just check in. We've, we, we, we are heading, I'm told, which is quite uh, interesting, to very soon having every language spoken in the British Isles. Um, a strange fun one we've got is Cockney. I don't think any schools will be doing that one. Um, but we've got Scots, we've got Scots Gaelic, we've got Irish, we've got Welsh, we've got Manx. Uh, a month ago, we recorded Cornish. Uh, so that's going to be coming live on the app quite soon. And then we've been um, pushed by Jersey. They have a language called Jerrye and Guernsey. And so hopefully by the end of this year, we will have recorded... Um, uh, Genisier for Guernsey and Gerrier from Jersey, which we're going to have to go over there to do. Again, slight hold up with COVID because they're being very, very careful about who goes there. And we really don't want to spend two weeks in, in quarantine before we do any recording. Um, and just yesterday and the day before, uh, we had a couple of lovely people over from Breton. Um, we recorded, uh, we recorded uh, from Brittany, I should say, sorry. And we recorded Breton which sounds absolutely fabulous. So that's going to be on the app as well. And, and we are adding new languages all the time. And so if you think of any languages we haven't got, um, if anybody wants to ask if we've got any particular languages, you can stick it in the chat. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're all ears for adding languages. And one of the things I would probably, something that's quite close to my heart is helping endangered languages. One of the things that's happened in the past as people have been forbidden from speaking their languages, it's, it's probably one of the, without people realizing, it's probably one of the cruelest things they've ever done because somehow people's um, native language, if I can call that, what their, their ancestors spoke, if they're not allowed to speak it, if they're stopped from speaking it, it's almost like taking part of their soul away. And uh, they now realize it's caused all sorts of problems. If you think of places where that's happened, in Australia, the, the Aboriginals, it, it's uh, now they're encouraging it and they're actually bringing one language. One of the chaps who works for us is involved in a project to bring back a year, a language that hasn't been spoken, Aboriginal language that hasn't been spoken for 100 years, which is quite interesting. But by bringing the languages back, suddenly uh, the Aboriginal people become far more part of Australia and, 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 um, and, and build it back into a country. The other places we've seen it happen, obviously, the Basque language years, well, a few years ago where people weren't allowed to speak, it caused huge problems. Uh, Catalan, again, is a problem you know, close to home. And then if you go to uh, Canada, where, uh, again, same problem, I've been to talks from people who, whose native language, he, you know, they were banned from speaking as a children. Um, and so they, you know, and their grandmother couldn't actually talk to them because that was their language. Um, so we're absolutely passionate about helping endangered languages and, and, 
and bring them back to life, which is definitely, definitely happening. Um, so it's quite exciting. And, and Vicky mentioned or asked about Manx. Manx did kind of die out in the Isle of Man, but there are now, again, in, in the Isle of Man, there are children who could almost be described as, as, as Manx first language speakers. They actually learn at school in Manx. Um, so I'm, I'm really keen at this stage. I think probably I've, I've talked far too much. Um, any questions from anybody? Well, I, I've got a question. I mean, I think it's lovely what you're what you're doing here in, in relation to um, sort of language awareness and giving the students the opportunity to um, try out a whole range of different languages. My my question would be: Is it possible to um, for a school to ask whether they just have, let's say, French or Spanish or, or what have you, so they just study those languages for the whole year, or would you recommend that they do have, let's say? a term in one language, a term in another language, and a term in a third language? Uh, that, um, Joe, that's a brilliant question. And I, I think the answer is either or both. So it may be that uh, in a primary school, you want the kids doing the language challenge and you'll do anything but a mainstream language. But at the same time, you're really keen uh, for the kids to be able to use the app and, and get access almost to all the topics for their time at the school. So that by the time... If they do all the topics in, in you talk, uh, that's 64 topics. Well, there's, there's three or four of them they probably won't do for various reasons. But if they do 60 topics, they'll have, they'll have acquired almost 2,500 words and phrases that they should be able to speak almost as well as their own language. Um, obviously, the, the teachers in the school you know, will, will be their learning manager as much as anything else, will will help them put that together and get them involved in comp uh, conversation and things like that. So um, my view is if, if, say, one of the things you offer is either French or Spanish at school, then definitely uh, we, we can um, sell the app to you. It works out, again, uh, depending on numbers, somewhere around five, eight pounds a student. Um, and we give you all the login details and they can... They can track their scores right the way through the time at your school. You can start them off young with a few topics and then build up. And, and the answer is yes, we can do that. Uh, contact us. And um, again, we'll, we'll do, particularly if you've been here, mention that you've been on this talk and we'll do something special for you because uh, one of the things we're, we're really keen for people to do is to spread the word. And, and that will come from you using it, trying it out and just seeing how well the we, we know from, from our own experience, the students who use it love it. Um, I've, had, I've had people do, who've, who've, you know, we're on the first language challenge in 2004, uh, sending me emails and saying what a difference it made to their life because of how they, you know, really got good at languages later and, and how it helped them. And they're not even necessarily going to be, you know, their, their life isn't, you know, as, as a linguist, but, but the fact that wherever they are, whatever you're doing, Languages just make a huge difference. It means you can go to other countries and and learn about cultures, learn with people in your science. You might be doing a science subject. You might be doing you know, atomic physics or something like that. But if you're doing that in France, then to be able to speak French well or wherever it is you go to, it's, it makes a huge, huge difference. That's fantastic. And, and can the children uh, practice at home as well as at school? Uh, because obviously it's on the... Well, it's on the internet, but you're using the app. Can they download yeah. the app onto their own device at home, or would you recommend yeah. they just use it in school? No, absolutely the opposite. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, these days, and uh, they younger and younger and younger, they seem to have um, mobile phones or tablets or whatever it is. And the the nice thing about the app is you can use it on anything, and you can swap between devices. So you could be using it on school computers. Uh, you could be. Uh, they could be using it on their phone or their mum and dad's phone or, or both. Um, so all you need is whatever the device is, you download the free app. So you, that's just a get on the app store. And, and you can use it on a Windows computer or Mac computer as well, which I'm doing at the moment is on the Mac. Um, so there's an app for all of those. And then you've got from us, you get, or through the school, you've got a, a, a login, login name. If you're secondary, an, an email. If you're primary, uh, you're you're doing it the other way, and then um, and, and a password, and you can just log in and use it. 
And what's really nice, you're on the school bus on the way home, you haven't got internet, but if it's downloaded on your device, then you carry on playing and it will upload your scores when it finds the internet. It does not mind if you've got the app having the internet. So that's but, great. That's yeah. great. So you can download it onto uh, an iOS phone or uh, Android phone or a tablet. It's on the uh, Google Play Store. It's on the uh, Apple App Store. And it's also available for Windows and Mac. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 really important. Uh, any 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 of you teachers got any lovely questions you want to chuck at me? Um, that would be lovely. I'd love to see some more questions in the chat. I think we've done all the questions that we've had so far. Uh, I think it would be good maybe to um, give a plug again to the code, if that's OK. So for those people that can see uh, on the, on Dick's screen, it's saying join the uh, uh, you talk. Um, I just want to sit, sit myself. Maybe could you stop sharing your screen for a second? Uh, Dick, yeah, I'll okay. stop just sharing. So yeah, easy. that's a good idea. Yep. That's all right. OK, that's what I think. So we, we can all see on um, uh, on Dick's background, join the fun at utalklanguagegames.com and use the code FIREDUP for 10% off the uh, the competition. So if you'd like to get involved in that, that's a, a way of um, doing it uh, in a cheaper way than the, the standard price. Uh, special, a special offer in this webinar. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, lovely. Um, I think that's brilliant. I think, if, are there any other questions from anyone in the chat? Feel free to ask your question now. I, um, I I'm always interested because I never, you know, one of the golden rules, never knock the competition. But uh, anybody use apps of any kind for, for kids um, and how do you get on with them or, or, you know, any thoughts you've got about teaching languages? And, and or one other question is any problems you have teaching languages, anything that you think might help or anything we can do to make it easier for kids? That would be great to hear. Fantastic. And if, and if you're watching the recording and you'd like to get in, in touch with you talk with these questions, feel free to do so as well. It's not all about the, the live opportunity of asking the question, which is obviously lovely. But if you're watching the recording back on my on my YouTube channel, feel free to uh, send an email in or a message um, about anything you'd uh, like to suggest as a, as a new possible uh, feature. Um, you'd be more than welcome to do so. Brilliant. Yeah. And I think you can email almost anybody. It all ends up with the right person. But language games at language games at utalk.com, hello at utalk.com, info at utalk.com, you know, send the messages in. You can even ring up the number on the telephone number on utalk if you want to talk to someone, if you've got a question. We're we're very friendly. And and we do answer the phone. And um the phone has been answered right the way through co through COVID, which is um quite an achievement. 24 Brilliant. hours almost. So yeah. Uh and the competition is running until um, Christmas, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You can still, I think you can still, Vicky will probably be better on it than I am, but I think uh, you should still be able to register in January. Obviously, the longer you use it for, the better chance you're going to have in the summer. So, uh, but there's nothing to stop you registering in December before Christmas, you know, send the kids home with it for, for Christmas holidays even. That's, it's got to be good. Yeah. Amazing. Fantastic. Well, I think um, we don't have any other questions in the chat. So I'd like to officially thank uh, yourself, Dick and, and Vicky, for doing such a great job in the chat and monitoring uh, everything and, and, and putting some some helpful comments there as well. That's wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Was there anything else you wanted to, oh, to, to oh, say what, before yes. we finish? I, I just realised one other thing. Um, if, if any of the schools, if you've got uh, children from who are refugees, I was going to say from Afghanistan, if you've got children who are refugees from anywhere um, and they need access for learning English, um, then we're really, really happy to do that for nothing. Uh, again, drop a message to info, we'll do it. And I'd even go a stage further. If you're a teacher in one of those schools where you've got kids and you'd like to learn a little bit of their language, then again, contact us equally. We'll do it for free because. Um, I would say that the, the number one message is that as, as you talk, as you know, people say, what are we about? What do we do? And I say, we help people make friends all over the world. Uh, that's what we like. And, and building friendships by talking to them has got to be one of the smartest ways. So, yeah, thanks. I couldn't Joe. agree more. What a, what a lovely way to finish the webinar. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much, uh, Dick, for your enthusiastic presentation, showing us uh, 
uh, all the different ways in which you can use you talk i love the um the way in which people in the chat as well had a go as well that was great fun <laughs> and uh and and vicky for all the work in the background as well it's been fabulous thank you so much brilliant okay thank you very much joe good You're evening to welcome. Yep. so i'll okay. stop recording now if that's okay there we are